Hi there, my name is Jordan Stuart Mackey and today I'll be doing a biomechanical analysis of a tennis serve. For the purpose of this video, this will be known as performer A and this will be performer B. Firstly, we'll observe in the loading phase the player's knee flexion. As you can see with performer A, his knee flexion is not to as great degree as performer B, as you can observe there. Because his knee flexion isn't as good, or to as uh, a greater degree in angle, this will this means that his the uncoiling of the elastic energy created by the ground reaction force will be a lot less because the degree the angle is a lot a lot lower than former B. The force being uh, exerted upon against the ground will be a lot lower. Subsequently, the force at which propels him upwards will then be a lot lower. So that's one area which he can improve. Secondly, move forward onto the acceleration phase. You can see here that there's a slight bend in performance A's knees, whereas in form of B, he has perfect knee extension or leg extension, which is going to also allow him to pel further up towards the ball because his knees are fully extended and are extended to a greater degree. This is going to give him, well, this is going to allow him to pel further up in the air to get to towards the ball. Also, moving on from there, we're going to look at the hip rotation starting from the loading phase to the acceleration phase so we can as we can see here force a hips nicely aligned here and here but as we go through just at the point of contact to there note that forms a's hips are not fully rotated whereas for form of b you can see just at the point of contact there, his hips are fully rotated round. Because his hips are fully rotated round, this increases his hip speed. Now hip speed is generated through the degree of rotation at the hips. Therefore, because he has greater hip rotation, the speed of which his hips are allowed to generate force up and through into the shoulders be a lot greater than say performance A because his degree of hip rotation and his hip speed will be a lot less causing him to have less efficient force passing through and into the shoulders. Moving on we're going to look at the dropping of the racket head behind the back and the elbow drop. As you can see here performer's elbow is relatively high, not as high as performance here. As you can see in relation to the head, it's just above the head, whereas here you can see it's aligned with the head. Even though there's a slight difference there, it means that the racket is able to drop further down. And because the racket can drop further down, this allows allows him to generate more momentum into the ball because it gives him more time to generate that power up into the ball. As you can see here, he can generate more force because the racket head is dropped there and it all, can come all the way through to there. Whereas Form A has less time to generate that force. So you can, as you can see, it goes from there to there. So he has less time to generate the maximum force. And finally, we go through to the follow through. As we can see, the pronation and snapping of the wrist. Now with Performer A, you can see that the racket is open faced, whereas in Performer B, it's closed. Closed face of the racket head. This means that the wrist is not fully pronating in Performer A. And because the wrist is not fully pronating, this means that the 
uh, generation of force and the raghead speed at the most crucial moment, just as just um, as in, at impact, he's not able to generate as much uh, rotation in the hand, wrist, and shoulder joint, which then in turn means that the force is definitely lessened because the longer you can maintain the closing of the racket head, the greater the pronation of the wrist. Thank you very much. That's it.